I know it's taken me a while to upload this video. The main purpose of starting this channel was to spread awareness, and many of you have been asking about the cure, symptoms, and best diet for ankylosing spondylitis. Honestly, I had planned to delay this upload further to gather more concrete evidence that could provide real hope and motivation. However, something deeply disturbed me recently. A fellow warrior, just 33 or 34 years old, tragically took his own life. Despite undergoing a successful hip joint replacement surgery, he faced complications on the other side of his body, which eventually led him into severe depression. He had undergone hip joint replacement surgery, which initially went well. However, he began experiencing issues with his other hip. This setback pushed him into depression. I believe he might have expected the surgery to completely cure his condition. As an AS patient, it we should be aware of all possible treatment options. By doing so, we can set realistic expectations and better navigate our journey towards managing the disease. This is why I decided to create this video, to address the many confusions that patients face. I'll be discussing ankylosing spondylitis, AS, but the information will also be valuable for those dealing with related conditions like psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease, and reactive arthritis, as these conditions are linked to the HLA B27 gene. For patients with autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or other complex autoimmune diseases, this video will help you gain a better understanding of disease progression and management. It's important to note that suicidal thoughts or depression are common among patients with AS, RA, psoriasis, or any other complicated autoimmune condition. The primary reason is that we often compare ourselves to friends or family members who seem to be enjoying life while we struggle. Questions like, why did this happen to me, often linger in our minds, leading to self-blame and depression. There are two types of patients those who dwell on their disease and blame themselves for having it. They resist trying new treatments or give up if something doesn't work. On the other hand, there are patients who remain positive, accept their condition, and continuously explore solutions and treatment options. Those in the second group tend to have a better quality of life and higher chances of improvement because they actively seek solutions. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Decide which mindset you want to follow. Many AS patients worry excessively about the future, how their condition will worsen in 20 to 30 years. But what guarantee is there that you'll even live that long? Worrying about an uncertain future wastes the present that could be lived joyfully. So, my message to you is, stay positive, gain knowledge about your condition, and keep hope alive. As for my health update, fortunately, everything has been stable. I still get occasional symptoms due to factors like diet, long sitting hours, or air conditioning, but they resolve within a few days of care. Although I am less strict with my routine compared to earlier, I try not to neglect it because I remember the pain I endured. Despite not taking medication for the past 9 to 10 months, I continue to follow my diet and lifestyle changes exercises. I am living symptom-free and enjoying life like any normal person. In this video, we will talk about the immune system and I will explain why autoimmune conditions occur. We will discuss the triggers of spondylitis, which cause the immune system to behave abnormally. Afterward, I'll explain the available treatment options and which is the best treatment. Finally, I will address some common questions related to diet and exercise. Let's start with understanding the immune system. Essentially, the immune system is a network of organs that protects our body. When harmful bacteria or viruses enter our body, the immune system identifies them as foreign and produces antibodies to eliminate them. A simple example of how the immune system works is a mosquito bite. After being bitten by a mosquito, you may notice swelling at the spot for a while. This happens because when a mosquito draws blood, it also leaves harmful bacteria in our system through its saliva. 
To eliminate these bacteria, the immune system releases antibodies and certain chemicals, leading to temporary swelling at that spot. Now let me explain some key parts of the immune system and their functions. I'll provide a basic overview since delving into deeper details would take too much time. The main purpose here is to help you understand the components of the immune system so that you can better grasp what autoimmune diseases are. First, let's talk about white blood cells, commonly known as WBC. They are an essential part of our immune system. White blood cells are produced by the bone marrow, a spongy tissue present inside our bones. These cells circulate throughout the body, searching for foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. When they encounter these foreign bodies, white blood cells attack them. Antibodies play a crucial role in the proper functioning of the immune system. The immune system produces antibodies to fight and neutralize foreign bodies. The lymphatic system is another important part of the immune system. It consists of tubes that spread throughout the body and primarily manage fluid levels and deal with cancer cells and bacteria. The lymphatic system includes lymph nodes, lymph vessels, and white blood cells. The spleen is another key organ that removes foreign bodies and destroys old or damaged red blood cells while storing defense cells. Additionally, the bone marrow, being spongy tissue inside our bones, produces red blood cells, which carry oxygen, white blood cells, which fight infections, and platelets, which assist in blood clotting. Lastly, we have the thymus, where different types of T-cells develop. T-cells are a vital type of white blood cells that help the body fight infections and diseases. Now let's move on to autoimmune diseases. What exactly is autoimmune and why is it called autoimmune? The only reason for any autoimmune disease is the abnormal behavior of the immune system. In simpler terms, the immune system behaves abnormally. Its normal function is to identify and eliminate foreign bodies like bacteria and viruses. However, in autoimmune diseases, the immune system does not act normally. Instead of eliminating invaders, it mistakenly attacks healthy tissues within the body. This can affect any part of the body, and currently around 80 types of autoimmune diseases have been identified. Let's discuss some common autoimmune diseases. Rheumatoid arthritis is one such condition, where the immune system produces antibodies that attack the joint linings, causing inflammation, swelling, and pain. Psoriasis is another autoimmune disease, a skin disorder where an overactive immune system causes skin cells to rapidly reproduce, forming a silver layer on the skin. Ankylosing spondylitis is a condition where the immune system attacks the patient's own health issues rather than foreign bodies, mainly affecting the spine and sacroiliac joints. Persistent inflammation in the joints can lead to joint fusion, causing partial or complete loss of movement. Other common autoimmune diseases include celiac disease, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and lupus. Diagnosing ankylosing spondylitis typically requires HLA B27, PCR, CRP, MRI, or X-rays. The HLA B27 test is ideally performed using the PCR method as it is more accurate than other methods. From personal experience and observation, I've found that sometimes the flow method gives a negative result, even when HLA B27 is positive, making diagnosis a bit challenging. Although HLA B27 can be negative in some cases, the disease may still be present. However, I believe that if we're paying for such a test, we deserve an accurate result. In the early stages of the disease, MRI and X-ray reports may show normal results because in these initial stages, degeneration isn't severe enough to be detected in these imaging tests. Therefore, many patients report normal MRI results in the early stages. Despite this, SR and CRP reports might still come back normal, making diagnosis more difficult. However, 
with the help of an experienced rheumatologist, an accurate diagnosis can be achieved. Let's talk about the cure for autoimmune diseases. Can autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, or other autoimmune conditions be cured? The answer is both yes and no. Let me explain why. When you search for the cure for an autoimmune disease, you'll often find that it can only be controlled with treatment, not completely cured. This is because medical science understands that the immune system produces antibodies or behaves abnormally. However, it still doesn't know the root cause of why the immune system is behaving in this way. Without knowing the cause, we cannot cure the disease. Therefore, till now, all treatments for autoimmune diseases work to control or suppress the immune system's response. These treatments do not target the root cause of the disease, which is why relief only lasts as long as the medication works. Once the medication stops working, the immune system resumes abnormal behavior because the root cause remains unknown. So, while we can manage the symptoms, we cannot completely cure the disease. 